Okay, I've introduced the idea of effective conductance and I just showed you uh, how to retrieve two rules that you would have been told in high school physics about conductors in series and parallel. And what I've done here, look, is underneath me, I've, uh, I've put those two rules. The effective conductance of two conductors in parallel is just the sum of the conductances, Ca plus Cb. And then there's the rule beneath that for the effective conductance of two conductors in series. Let me show you something really cool. Okay. I've got on the main screen there the circuit that we've been studying ever since we started studying circuits, okay? In fact, it's the only one we've studied yet. And what I've done is I've set node 1 to the unit potential and I've set node 2 to 0, grounded it. So therefore, the f hat we know now, which is the net current divergent from node 1, is the effective conductance, okay? And we actually know what that number is because we've already computed it. In fact, do you remember we've computed it in several ways? We computed it by taking actually the Neumann problem and just rescaling it. And then I showed you how to use Scher complements to solve a matrix uh, problem, which also gave you F hat. And we found the number 8 over 5. If you've forgotten that, just go back and look at the other lectures. But 8 over 5 is the effective conductance of this circuit when you uh, set node 1 to unit voltage and ground node 2. I'm going to show you a really cool way to get the same answer without doing any matrix manipulations at all. Or rather, we are, but we're doing it kind of under the hood. Okay. I've noticed from looking at this picture, look, first of all, whatever I do now, I'm not going to touch nodes 1 and 2, because they're the ones that I've set to unit and zero voltage. But if you look at the, the edges between node 3 and 4, and then between 3 and 2, by the way, all of these, the value 8 over 5 came from assuming all of the conductances were 1, remember? So at the moment, every conductor in that picture has conductance 1. But look, if you look at x4 to x3 and then x3 to x2, that looks to me like two conductors in series. So I'm going to kind of draw a squiggly arrow, which means that I'm going to kind of... There's node 1 and node 4, and there's node 2, and uh, let's, let's do that. And what I'm going to do, you see, is in a different colour, I'm going to draw a direct node. Remember, we've always used pink. In fact, we used pink boxes, didn't we? I would like to replace the two edges between 4 and 3 and 3 and 2 by a single edge and replace its conductance by its effective conductance, okay? Now, if there's two conductors in series, and they're both of unit conductance, then I know from my rule down there, look, it's the second one, the effective conductance of this one is 1 times 1 divided by 1 plus 1. I've set CA and CB to 1, and I've used the second formula. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's a half. So now I'm in a situation where I've got 1, 1, 1, and a half. Okay? Now... Interesting. So I've got, if you like, a completely different circuit, except I've gotten rid of two of the edges and considered its effective edge. Okay, let's just see what happens with this. Now, I've actually gotten rid of a node, haven't I? Because I've, it kind, of, I've kind of hidden it in the pink box that that, that pink squeal now represents because I don't care about it really. I only I care about the effective conductance. But now between nodes four and two, I can see a conductor, this one, of conductance one, and this one, the new one, of conductance a half. And they look like they're, they're, they're two conductors in parallel between the nodes four and two. So I'm gonna draw a little squiggly arrow and think about this. Now I'm going to keep, you know, these edges the same. And then I'm going to replace these two conductors in parallel by another squiggly line where I'm now going to think about the first formula, CF, CF being CA plus CB, and one of them is going to be CA is 1, and then the CB is a half, giving me an effective conductance, I think, of 3 over 2. Hmm, interesting. 
Okay. All right. But now you see, isn't it true that this conductor and this conductor here, if they're thinking about these two nodes, this is being at one and zero, then this is a conductor of conductance one, and this is a conductor of conductance three over two. So can't I now draw another arrow over here and draw this circuit? I've still got my edge there, that's this edge. But I'm going to draw another, another, another pink edge, which is kind of a, remember, we like to use pink for effective, okay? which is now two conductors in series, this one and this one. Okay, so what I need now is, remember, I take the product, which is one times three over two, because this one's got conductance three over two, this one's got conductance one, divided by one plus three over two. We just do some calculations, that's three over two divided by five over two, which if I'm not mistaken, is three over five. Okay, now look at this, everybody. I have now got one, only two nodes left, and there's a conductor of conductance one and another of conductor of effective conductance three over five, and they're in parallel, aren't they? Which means I can use the top formula on my right there to, to work out with some other squiggly lines. I can just redraw these, these nodes now, but now I'm gonna draw the final thing in pink because that's my pink box now. And I think you can see, can't you, that I use, I've got, I've now got uh, one plus three over five. Oh my goodness, look at that. That's five over five plus three over five. It's eight over five. Oh my goodness. That was the same F hat, in this case, the effective conductance that I got by Scher complements and uh, another method of rescaling the Neumann problem. And I've gotten it now by these squiggly arrows, which have basically taken little components. Uh, I've, I've, in a sense, reduced my graph to just one pink box between two notes with an effective conductance that I've cons con you know, consistently worked out by a reduction of the circuit to, if you like, equivalent circuits in terms of their conductance. Okay, of course, they are not the same circuits, but in terms of the effective conductance of, if you electrify, you know, node one to unit voltage and uh, you ground node two, the effective conductance is indeed eight over five. Isn't that cool? Uh, we'll do some more examples of this and then we'll study why it works.